Holy buckets. Uh, day one in net, man. I, uh, I'm, I'm honored to be up here. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty crazy having to follow up some of the people that I've already talked today. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with a few of those people, and it's, uh, it's a pretty sweet thing to, to have the ability to talk to you guys today. So, um, all right, so I, uh, I, I'm from Minnesota. Don't you know? You bet you, no doubt about it, bud. Um, <laughs> And so I'm going to start this out. Brandon said he likes analogies. I'm trying to get better at analogies, so I'm going to attempt an analogy here today. Um, so I actually grew up watching NASCAR, which is probably surprising. You're probably like, why didn't you like, why weren't you building igloos up in Minnesota or something with how cold it is up there or finding Bigfoot or something? Um, but my, uh, my dad and my grandpa were really, really into it uh, growing up. And uh, one of my favorite races of the year to watch was this race called Talladega in Philip Tice's backyard. <laughs> Literally, it's like in your backyard. Um, it's in Alabama. So, uh, so if you're not a NASCAR fan, um, who here has ever heard of the race Talladega? Just curious. All right, actually, half of you. That's sweet. Awesome. Great. Okay, cool. So uh, there's, uh, there's a, basically, if you don't know anything about NASCAR, there's like a 500-mile race where they're really good at turning left. Um, <laughs> for like 250 laps or something outrageous, and they're going like 180 to like 200 miles an hour for essentially like three hours, four hours, something crazy. Now, um, what I didn't know growing up, just being oblivious to what was going on on the TV, is that these cars had these things called restrictor plates, right? So every other race, not every other race, but the majority of races throughout the year you're just, you can, you hit the brakes, you go. You hit the brakes, you go. With this, you're essentially just full throttle for 500 miles. So what's crazy about it is these cars are literally like 6 to 18 inches apart going 200 freaking miles an hour for 500 miles. It's kind of absolutely outrageous. And they would be doing this like 15, 30, 40 cars like in a row, right? And so if you've ever seen the crazy NASCAR crashes, like that's one of the events that you're going to see some crazy crazy crashes out if they get too close. So what's wild though is if you take the restrictor plate off, these cars can supposedly go 200, or they can go, instead of 200 miles an hour, they can go up to 250 miles an hour when they're drafting if you took the restrictor plate off of the car. So today guys, I was asked to, to wrap the, the content up today um, on speaking on what we are basically calling the, the cuckoo business of your evolution of your CSP business. Right? I've kind of, as Chelsea did, I've kind of renamed it to the evolution of your CSP habits. So I often get asked the question, specifically over the last couple of years, of like, how do you even get to a place of selling $800,000 in a year? Right? So my goal today is no matter where you are in the business, we got Curtis in here sold freaking $1.3 million last year. And we have a lot of you, obviously, that probably sold anywhere from $100,000 to $1 million last year, 100000 to a $1 million last year. So what my goal is today is to help you guys get to the next level within your business, whatever that looks like, okay? So before we start today, I want to pose a question for all of you, which is what if you removed the restrictor plate from your business? So what if you removed that restrictor plate from your business? Okay, what would be possible? Okay, so... The reason I was asked to give this message today, guys, is I started basically where everybody else in this room started, right? I, I, I had a $24,000 first summer. I branched the next summer. We sold 40 grand. I accounted for 10 of it. Whew. Super good at management. And then I sold like 35 to 60 grand through college every year. And then a couple years out of college, I was selling like 120 grand a year. And then I started seeing some significant growth. Big thanks, shout out, Cutco Events. Who here loves events? <laughs> so to give you guys a kind of a background on my trajectory, so in 2015, I sold 118 grand. In 2016, I sold 255, so that was my first like quantum growth year. In 2017, I sold 330 grand. In 2018, I sold 425. 2019 was 512. 2020, I sold 300, learned how to golf. It's a fun year. Great farmer's tan. And I also grew a beard, so for those of you that know me, it was sick. Um, 2021, I sold 807, and then last year I sold 814. Okay, So today what I want to talk to you guys about is what it looked like to make those jumps and what it took to take my biggest jump right from 
300 to 800, and also how to sustain it in back-to-back -back years. Now, my, my goal is no matter where you are in the business is to try to help instill pillars within your guys' business that you guys can repeat year after year. Okay, now I can look at every single one of those years, every one of those years, and I can tell you why it grew and also why I also decreased in sales. So what I want to do today is I want to accomplish three things. Okay, the first thing I want to accomplish today, guys, is I want to make you aware of what might be going on within your business right now without you even noticing what's going on within your business, right? Bring some awareness to that. The second thing I want to do is I want to help you guys get some tools and also some new habits to take action to get you to that next level. And then lastly, I want to just remind you of how simple it can be to actually create quantum growth, okay? So to start, and by the way, there's a handout. Don't bring the handout out yet. Let's bring the handout at the very end. So this is a message that, again, take the notes as you feel free, guys, but my goal today is just to kind of inspire you on where you're at to where you want to be next. Okay, the perspective on how the business evolves as you start within this business is your sale intellect gets better, your level of understanding of the process of how the running a business literally will grow hand in hand. A $100,000 a year rep, guys, is just not looking at the business the same way as a person that's selling a million dollars a year, right? And that's okay. Okay, where are my $100,000 a year reps at? Can I get an eye? Make some, make some noise, come on. All right, guys? All right, like first time net attendees ever. Hi, hi, hands high, fuck you, let's go. I love it, man. Net literally changed my life, okay? Literally changed my life, okay? So to be honest, when you're at $100,000 in a year, guys, you're selling 100 grand-ish, you're literally ignorance on fire, right? That's what you are. We're at, we absolutely, really, have no idea what's going on, right? We're just pumped to cut pennies. We're pumped to cut leather. And we love 12 5K rocks. We love 20K rocks at 100K, right? SE2, we're like, this is sick. I got a freaking sick paperweight. It's going to be the best thing ever, right? We see the people on our teams, right? We're just basically drooling at the sales reports. We're like, Jesus, how in the hell did they sell $20,000 in three days at that event? Right? I remember seeing the names of Curtis, I remember seeing the names of Josh, Jason, Mike, Seth, and having absolutely no idea what it looked like to sell what they sold. Right? All I knew is that the paychecks would be freaking sick. Right? So when you're around 100,000 bucks right, in an annual year, keep your head down. Right? You're just kind of continuing to work hard. You're trying not to fail out of college while missing school for region trips and drinking Kool-Aids with too much sugar in it. Right? <laughs> Now, when you break past that 100K barrier into 200, 300,000 barrier, right, now you're looking at your schedule and you're seeing a bunch of gaps of what it looks like to kind of be consistent, right? You've seen the glimpse of that 10, that 20, maybe even a 30K week, right? You see your year as a bunch of open spots so you can fit in as much as you possibly can, right? You're evolving from that thing we call a push rep, right? When I look back and when I sold 500 grand, guys, that version of my business, like, I looked a lot closer at the events that I was doing super, super well at and used a lot of what Kelly was talking about and marketing to my past clients, right? And I started kind of trying to be a little bit more intentional about my events. Usually when you get to the 400, 500, 600,000 dollar level, that's when you're starting to get invited to other programs, whether it's CGC, whether it's federal, whether it's industry events, right? At 500K a year, you're averaging 10K per week, guys, right? You're averaging $5,000 in income every single week, right? I call it the True Hitters Club, right? So you're experiencing those pop days, right? Where you have a 15K business gift order that you've been working on for two years, or you've got that 13K random Friday that you had at a state fair, right? Now the $800,000 version of me is completely dialed in, right? To what it looks like to be really, really good at everything that we do within the scripts, right? As Brandon was talking about earlier. Now, not just showing up to an event and saying, man, I sure hope I sell 10,000 bucks this weekend. It's like, now you have the standards, right? Of 10K days are a thing, like a thing when things just kind of go right, and 20K days are when things are really clicking, right? You're walking into that event just oozing confidence, right? You're averaging five to $10,000 per day. I did my numbers last year, guys, and I averaged 6,000 bucks a day at the booth, and that includes service events, which I have a lot of room for improvement, right? At this point, right, you are looking at the big picture perspective when you've sold 800 grand, right? You see the months of weakness, right? And I was talking to, um, I was talking to Alan. Where was Alan at earlier? Right? I took my own advice. I was telling you earlier. I was like, I looked at the, for me this year, I looked at the, the months that I was like, I'm not doing super hot in that, that, that area this month. I'm just going to be intentional about those months, right? 
The idea of sharpening the ax and the law of compounding with your skill set, patience, and also understanding of the business, also with a growing number of past customers, that's where all of the 700, 800, 900 million dollar years really come to fruition, okay? Now, with these perspectives of where you're at in the business, I know that each of these situations probably ring true for wherever you are in the business, right? What I found that there are different habits that differentiate a $100,000 a year rep, $500,000 a year rep, and a million dollar a year rep, okay? So what I struggled with when I wrote this is it's hard in 30 minutes to try to describe to you how $800,000 in a year happened, right? Where it's growth over 500 grand over my best year ever, it's really hard to do that, but I'm gonna do my best to give you guys some practical steps on what you guys can do today, okay? First things first, use the tools in your existing toolbox, okay? The reason Cutco has provided so many of these conferences, <clears throat> these retreats, these summits, right, is to literally help us get better at our job. In my opinion, the most underutilized tool within Cutco is literally the notes that you have on your computer or in a notebook. In 2019, I remember kind of feeling just like completely overwhelmed after my first 500K year. I was like, Jesus, man, I feel like I've spent so much money on coaching, so much time in coaching. I feel like I have so much at my fingertips and I feel like I haven't even put a lot of it into practice yet, right? So there's so much information that we have and I feel like the only reason I was growing my business was simply just because I just kept throwing more things into my calendar and I just kept failing forward. I, like the snowball effect was real, but I was also burning myself out, right? I attribute a lot of the success to $800,000 in 2021, literally from notes that I was taking at net in 2016 or notes that I was taking when I was cooking with Josh Muller back in 2013 on just how to have a better mindset and how to overcome adversity, right? It's easier said than done, but are you actually committing to the time to review what you already have written on paper? Okay, as a $100,000 a year rep habit, guys, <laughs> I remember taking notes at conferences and being like, I don't know what I'm doing, but that's a nugget. Woo, that's a nugget. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with that, but that's so sick. That was like, that was it, ignorance on fire. I was like, this is the coolest thing ever, but I have no idea how to implement that, right? I remember hearing Brandon Brown talk about objections and I'm like, I just panic when a person says I need to think about it. I'm like, what the, I, I, please don't leave, right? <laughs> now, when you get to the $200,000 to $300 a year, right, that rep is taking dig diligent notes and you're eager to use it, but you still don't really know how to put all the puzzle pieces together, right? And at 500 grand, in my opinion, a lot of these people have committed a lot of these notes to memory, right? But you really haven't put your flair onto it yet. Right? At 800 to a million dollars, right, those reps are practicing what's preached. Right? They're using the tools from their toolbox and they're committing to making them a true art form. Okay? The only reason last year I was given the opportunity to talk about the new customer approach was literally just because I was so intentional about practicing my scripts in real time with real customers. And then I just got good at it. Right? Practicing with friends, right? in front of a mirror, recording yourself on a voice note is so important to know what you actually sound like but using your conscious mind, right, to know what you sound like at an event is what helps you get really good at this. The scripts we have, guys, are already so good, right, but have you done the repeatable action enough to make it an art, right? I've witnessed some amazing things behind the booth. I've seen Curtis literally sell a flatware chest, a chest of flatware, I'm gonna correct myself for you, Curtis, okay, in three minutes to a person that does not own Cutco and he didn't even hand them a piece of flatware. I was like, are you kidding me? I was like, I couldn't even understand what was going on. I was like, what? He's like, oops. <laughs> like, Jesus, Curtis, right? I've seen Seth have people that have come to the booth over and over and over again at a state fair, and they're like, oh, we have everything. And then just magically, Seth has, Seth has a $1,000 package in front of him. I'm like, what is going on? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> Right? I've seen Josh, like what he was talking about earlier, like every package with every customer every single time. It's literally every single customer, every single package, every single time. Right? Who here has heard of the book Atomic Habits? Okay, if you haven't read it, read it. It's the best book that's literally ever been written if you want to make changeable or make changes in your life yesterday. Okay? We don't rise, and James Clear says this in his book, this is probably one of my favorites from his, from his book which is we don't rise to the level of our goals, but we fall to the level of our systems. 
your goal is the desired outcome, right? Your system is a collection of daily habits that will get you there, okay? So I'll say that again. We don't rise to the level of our goals, but we fall to the level of our systems. Your goal is the desired outcome. Your system is a collection of daily habits that will get you there, okay? Curtis has not accumulated like 20,000 freaking customers, guys, overnight. Rob Robincheck has not sold literally hundreds of thousands of dollars of reorders and business gifts over the last three years on accident, okay? I remember the lesson that I learned back in 2014. My goal was SC2. I was like, I'm going to sell 34 grand. I'm going to break my buddy's assistant manager record. And I had this wild epiphany. I was like, if I sell 34 grand in 17 days, I'm earning $1,000 a day, right? And I was like, huh, what does that look like? So what did I do? I essentially was like, I'm just going to act as if I'm going to be a person that just makes $1,000 a day. So what did I do? I, made, I, wait, I woke up and went to the gym at 4.30 every single morning for 17 days in a row. Right? I showed up on time to meetings and appointments because you don't show up late if you're making $1,000 a day. Right? I ate right, didn't eat fast food because that's what $1,000 a day person that's earning that couldn't possibly run efficiently on fast food. I hit my goal. Right? The most powerful learning moment that I had those two weeks was I fell to the level of my systems of my daily habits and my results were rewarded because of it. So I ask you, right now, what are your daily habits? Are they habits that are putting you in a place of abundance or scarcity? Right? Are you journaling? Are you meditating? Right? Are you doing the daily practices that we hear our coaches talk about? Or are you just thinking about doing them? Are you exercising on a regular basis or are you skipping it because you're too tired? Are you getting fresh air on a regular basis or are you sitting downstairs in your basement playing video games? Are you thinking about what you want or are you just going through the monotonous daily grind? Are you reading books or are you constantly scrolling through Instagram? Now the question still remains guys, how do you actually achieve the big goal, right? And the big goal for each of you guys in this room is different for every single person. So the second step is to trust the process. Who here has ever heard the overnight, average overnight success takes 10 years? $800,000 in a year, guys, started in 2010. And it happened in 2021. There is a steady progression from 100,000 to a million dollars. Eventually, two million. Rob, Curtis, Brandon, it's you guys. <laughs> Here's how I look at the profession, right? You're, under 100, 100, you're around $100,000 a year, you're an absolute hustler, right? I love that part of the business. It's fun, you're learning. You really don't know what weighs up sometimes, but you're learning. You're selling 100 to 300,000, you guys are an associate, right? You break into 400, 600K range, you're looking at it being a top exec. You kind of know what's up. And the 750 plus, the million plus, right, you're the CEO. Right? When's the last time you asked yourself, how am I spending my time? When you're at $100,000 in a year, guys, you're really not even really working that much within the business. You might feel like you are, but you're really not working that much. Right? You're just learning the value of conditioning to what hard work is. When you get to 300 grand, right, you start to get a feel. You're hustling, you're grinding, you're doing 50 events a year. Half of them are one day events. Right? And you're doing 200 service calls. You're just full on customer acquisition mode. Best advice I ever heard was from Josh Muller. He's like, my goal is to get to 10,000 customers ASAP. And that's my goal, right? The 500 year rep is still look, doing a ton of events. Guys, when I did have my first 500K year, I did 35 events that year. And not most of them were not one day events, right? Once you get to 500K though, once you're doing those events, you see the past customers come your way. Right? So everything starts to compound. And once you get to 800 or a million, that never, the, the new customers never stop happening. Mike Dowd gets more referrals than anybody in this room, and it's not even close. Right? It's because he has the compounding snowball effect of year after year after year getting more and more customers. Now the next question is, how do you continue to make more sales, make more money, but make it sustainable? Right? So I was sold in this was something that my division manager, Dane Espigard, taught me, which is the 5% rule, right? So I ask a question to all of you guys, what would it look like to have your best year ever again while working less? Now, by the way, I'm gonna go against my own advice and this year I'm actually working more, right? To sell a million dollars, I realize, does not happen on accident, right? And the goal that you're going for does not happen on accident either. 
right? But what would it look like to work a little less, but sell more? So I track my event days, guys. It's a good thing for you to do too. In 2019, I had 139 days behind the booth. 2021, I had 150 days in the booth. Last year, I had 135 booth days, right? So Dane implied some wisdom to me that he's used in his life. And for those of you that don't know Dane, he's the first ever manager, essentially, because he's a DVM, but his district, so his office, he's the first ever office ever to have back-to-back -back $4 million years, right? Who here, by a show of hands, has ever experienced the burnout effect? All right, I know I have. And by the way, if you haven't burned out, you're probably gonna burn out at some point in your life, and that's welcome to being a human, okay? So one of the things that he does every single year that I started to do as well is he looks back at each year into each campaign and he looks at what would it would look like to work 5% less each campaign. So what does that look like in your business? At 100 grand, guys, to be honest, if you're selling about $100,000 in a year, I would challenge you to continue to be intentional about when you're working, right? You're probably not working a completely stacked schedule full of cuckoo. You're probably going to school, right? But you're at square one. So test what's possible if you're at 100 grand in a year. Once you get to 200 to 300, right, I would challenge you to still also keep the pedal to the metal, right? But I can almost guarantee you I could look at your schedule and find three days where you kind of maybe thought about phoning, but you didn't phone. You just kind of sat there and looked at your list. And you're like, yeah, but my buddies are at the bar. I could go golf, right? So you're twiddling your thumbs in front of your computer not actually making calls, right? So here's what's funny. The $800,000 me, right? I looked at it and I took a couple of smaller events where I was selling four to five grand at and I took those out and I replaced it with fulfilling experiences either for my own personal dreams list or just personal growth time, right? When 2021 happened, guys, last year, I did not expect to sell $800,000, okay? I did not go out and say, I'm gonna sell 800 grand this year, okay? But what I did do before all of the events slowly but surely started to come back is I was super and hyper intentional about what I was doing with me time. So what's amazing is that I filled my tank with things that fulfilled me in amazing ways. Golf is a big thing for me. So when it was time to go, it was time to go. I was on an absolute mission when I was working, right? When I was between 200 to 500,000, you guys might feel like this, I didn't know what to do with myself if I wasn't working. I felt like I always had to be working to get to the next thing. I was like, I gotta keep grinding, I gotta keep grinding, right? But it's interesting how the $800,000 version of myself I looked at the more important stuff and I knew how to turn it on, but most importantly, I knew how to turn it off. Personal time away and intentional prep before my key events were the difference maker. Now with that being said, I have a couple ideas to help you guys create sustainable and repeatable growth, okay? First things first, what packages are you selling? I've been able to witness Seth Kins over the last six years, guys, at a variety of different fairs. It's like clockwork. He sells ultimate upgrade after ultimate upgrade after ultimate upgrade like it's clockwork. And it's because Seth takes the 45 seconds extra with every customer to sell them a butcher knife, a turning fork, and a spatula spreader when he sells them a homemaker. Right? So he didn't have to customize it. Right? Am I saying you can't sell a customized ultimate upgrade? Absolutely not. I got to see Chelsea in Germany do it a few different times last year. It was like, oh my God, what is happening? Right? However, I can, I can promise you it is easier to sell a textbook ultimate upgrade. Just simple, right? So are you consistent with your packaging or are you customizing every single step that you sell? You want easy and repeatable growth, guys? The five pieces in your five piece, keep them the freaking same. Every single time. I'm not saying every single person is gonna buy the same exact five knives, but what if 90% of your five piece specials were the paring knife, the trimmer, the cheese knife, the petite chef knife, and the petite carver? Pretty tough to figure out what the next upgrade's gonna be, right? It's not that complicated. Right, so to create long and sustainable growth, $800,000 me guys is literally just doing all the little things that the $200,000 and $500,000 version of myself was told to do, I'm just doing them. Right, those little things that are repeated over and over and over again are what add up to the big things. You let that rule of compounding really add up. Right, last year between July 24th and September 6th, I had 32 booth days. I sold $294,000 in those 32 days. $294,000, guys, was complete on purpose action. It was not an accident in any way, shape, or form. Leading up to that seven week period of time, the previous six months, I drove 20 hours to go to a small military base. I drove nine and a half hours to go to a small home show. I worked a car show where nobody decided to show up. 
right? I was sharpening my ax for game time. Every single one of you guys have a time in your schedule where you have events piled up back to back to back. How are you preparing for those times? You wanna know how quantum growth happens? 500K growth over, again, $300,000 in 2020, it's literally simple. I literally just do all of the things that the best reps in the country tell you to do, and I just do them. So here's a laundry list, guys, of practical things that created $800,000 back-to-back years. Again, this will be recorded, and I'm gonna fly through this for the sake of time, okay? I was intentional about talking with the ultimate to every freaking customer, mentioning every package with every single customer every single time, even if it was five seconds. I invested in steak knives for my both my ultimate, my signature, and my house. I have a legacy cookware set for both my booth and my house. Pitching the idea of the Cuckoo Kitchen to everyone. Trying to put a piece of flatware into every customer's hand, whether it's for two seconds or two minutes. Asking every customer if they own a business or give gifts to clients or employees. I recorded myself making food, right? And shared that with my, my customers when I was selling them cookware. I was not being lazy. I maximized each and every single customer, even if it was a single trimmer. I attempted to upserve on every order. I deleted social media and any type of unproductive app. I role played my scripts a lot. I recorded myself and with my customers, like Brandon said, and then listened to those recordings. Scripted out phrases in the sections of the demo that I thought I was doing really well at, and also the ones that I was like, I suck at this. I invested in catalogs and spent a ton of money with marketing with Vast Action. I got an assistant to help with the back end admin so I could literally just spend time on making more sales and CPO. I upgraded my tablecloths. I bought a bunch of logoed samples for my booth. Sent a thank you note to every single customer who placed an order. I upgraded my circle of influence. I put my pride on the shelf. I asked other people what the heck they were doing to create success. I dropped down with sincerity. I understand average order is a big deal, right? But I don't care about average order more than helping a person replace a missing table knife that ends up getting that for free when I upsell them a homemaker for their daughter, right? Give back to those people without hesitation right, as much as you're able, say hi to as many people as you possibly can at the booth. Say you're cutting deals to everybody. <laughs> it sounds stupid, but get off your phone and say hi to people, right? Fail, then try again and reload with a short-term memory loss that you believe that you're going to be able to just do it better the next time. Experiment. Do your best. I, for, I did my best and I forgot the rest. I was sharing my goal with every customer and thanking them so much for their order and how much closer it puts me towards my goal. I meditated. I journaled. I let go of being realistic. Are any of those things rocket science? No. Right? And the crazy thing about all of this, guys, is I'm not even the freaking best at any of these things. Literally. I just do what the other people tell me to do and I just do it. Right? It was just a hyper level of intentionality, right? Do I remember every single thing every single time? Absolutely not, I'm human, just like you guys, right? So I'm gonna finish with this, guys. All the scripts in the booth upgrades, fine and dandy, right? The difference between $100,000 BERT and million dollar year this year BERT was my mind, right? Brandon, Matt, 2019, they went on an international trip to Japan, first time ever, you guys probably remember talking about this, but they went to Japan and popped off. They were like, dude, what is happening? They're at the booth. They're like, Jesus Christ, we're having 20K days right now, right? So one of the cool things about it is they blew what they expected to sell completely out of the water, right? You probably noticed that you guys had some of those businesses or events, excuse me, this last year at an event where you're like, Jesus, the most this event's ever done is three grand. I just sold 15K at it, right? The key that I took home from the message when they came back from from Japan was the idea of removing limitations. What if you guys went into this year without restrictions of what could happen? What if you removed the restrictor plate of completely what was realistic and walked into what was possible? What if you walked into each day and said, oh, 10K, that's a cute start, right? Seth and I sold 600 grand between the two of us in those 32 days in North Star, right? I shared with this with some of you guys last year, but I feel like it's worth repeating again. Our main focus was to go into each day being open to massive days, but being okay with not knowing how the hell it was going to look, right? We set the intentionality of gratitude at the beginning of each day. Seth would, I would say, what are three things you're grateful for? And Seth would list off 10. Vibes were off the goddamn charts, and we would do our absolute best with every single interaction. The great thing is, great things happened, right? It was not an accident because Seth and I were open 
to great things happening to us. The universe has a way of sending amazing things to those who are ready to receive it. All of this stems back to your habits. The $800,000 version of me guys asked, are my habits helping me create and cultivate abundance and mental fortitude to overcome adversity, right? A hundred to five hundred thousand dollar me guys struggled to even see what eight hundred thousand dollars was. I couldn't even see that. But the eight hundred thousand dollar version of myself had the sixth sense, which is abundance. I looked at each event with the lens, and I challenge each of you. I'm going to finish with this. I'm going to challenge each of you guys to look at each event this year that you have in your schedule, and use the verbiage, not if things go well, but when everything goes well. Did things go to plan every single day that we sold 600 grand between the two of us in 32 days? Absolutely not, right? But that didn't matter because we didn't care about how it happened. We just let the universe provide because we just had to show up the right way. So look at yourself in the mirror. Are you taking action on all of the little things that will allow you to compound to that next level of your CSP business? Because if not, I challenge you to set the intention to do so. To wrap this bad boy up, the next level of your guys' CSP business is not that far away, right? Go use the tools in your toolbox. Use the 5% rule to find some more satisfaction within your personal life and grow your business. Upgrade your standards of your habits. Keep cultivating that sixth sense of abundance. Your first $800, $500 million year is right around the corner. Who's going to go out and take it?